Amen. Because I believe that that's the level and greater that you're on. Mm -hmm. And I want God to take you to a whole new level. I've watched over the years what God has done. But let me say this to you. The best is that we, the prophets are second. So the first thing God says, the apostles and the prophets go together. Yes, a black. Hallelujah. Dark as I am, yes. I was thinking like a white man. I'm with you. Behaving like a white man. Yes. Acting like a white man. Yes. And was preaching to Negroes acting like, like they was white. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't working with them. In the white church, it was working. But yeah. in the black church, they were looking at me like I had something on me. So yeah. it looked like you came from the same. I came. I was, remember the, you remember the charisma, charismatic bunny hop? Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> That had nothing to do with our people, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and whites started doing that because the, 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 the word came out about dancing. So they would do what the blacks did in the Church of God of Christ and in the religious circles. Yes. So they came up with the white bunny hop. Yes. And can you imagine Negroes doing the bunny hop that don't even fit them? <laughs> Bunny hop fit the white folk, but it didn't fit us. <laughs> and well, I never did dance, because I'm not yeah. a dancer, so I still don't dance. But it was so kicks how we came and gave the black people the bunny hop. Hello, somebody. Yes. As if to say what the black churches was doing dancing-wise was wrong. And when you understand the worship and the, the praise of God, mm -hmm. it's about turning and twisting and jumping and, yeah. and, 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 and exhibiting the graciousness of God. And now we're skipping around and uh, uh, off beat. Ooh, come on. Oh, Lord. So can you see a black man? I wish I could stand up right now. <laughs> Dancing off beat. Lord, somebody yes, help me here. Yes. Oh, it, it was kicks. It, it was, was kicks. It was. But thank God he's delivered us. Hallelujah. <laughs> delivered. Yeah. I so, realize who I is. All right. So, Apostle, what's going on? Tell us, you know, talk to us this morning. Well, first of all, I want to just thank God for Apostle to have me on this program this morning. And I want to say hello to all the viewers out there. Amen. Praise all the over the world. All over the world. You are viewing, you are tuning in with the Chief Apostle here on the East Bank of New Orleans with a beautiful setting. Yes. So just keep your ears open and your heart soft. All so right. You can receive. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So what's been happening over at Love Outreach? Well, a lot has been happening. We are steadily moving forward, putting together. Uh, we're, we're about to do something just a little bit different here on the first Sunday of the month. For the next first 10 Sundays, we, if you remember, when you look at these images of Christ sitting at the table with his disciples, uh, taking communion, they, uh, they're really having a meal because those who you eat with become your family. And they're sitting down eating and breaking bread and then they take up the cup and they take up the bread. Well, we're going to, every first Sunday, sit down and have a meal. And now you're going to do it in the mornings or you're going to do it in the evenings? I'm going to kind of do it, uh, it's going to be a light meal, you know, but it's going to be no, around no, 11 o'clock. You're going to do breakfast. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to be brunch. But that's supposed to be supper now. It's going to be brunch. So what you say? Now, now, why I say that to you is, that's true. I am doing God has been dealing with me about the communion. Amen. And we had communion last night. And Jesus makes a statement. One of the last things he says to them is, mm. I'm not going to have this with you no more mm. until you enter into the kingdom. And so Jesus is with the 12 disciples in the book of Matthew, chapter 26. And he is having the last Passover, yes, but the first communion. My God. So at the same time, he's shutting down one door, yes, and he's opening up a new door, yes, and he's giving definition yes. to what he's doing. My God. Man, that's so powerful it when is. you understand. And so, as you understand, the Passover yes. was a feast, where they sat down and had supper. Mm -hmm. That's the Passover feast. Yes. And it had different components. They would drink wine, they would sing songs, and they would do different things in it. They had to follow the instructions. Yes. 
And Jesus says, this is the last time mm. yes. we do that. Yes. From this day forward, I am going to institute the Lord's Supper. Yes. And now we're having the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. And God is now redefining, or I, I shouldn't say redefining, but God is defining or giving clarity to us. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul says in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, mm -hmm. he says, let me give you this revelation that I received of yes. the Lord. Let me deliver it unto you. Let me give you clarity because you know the Jews were yes. still celebrating the Passover. Yes. And so the Lord's Supper is no longer, well, well the, the Passover, which is the Lord's Supper now, yes. will not be celebrated once a year, mm -hmm. but it's going to be celebrated as often as you come together. together. Yes. yes. So Jesus is now, and the Apostle Paul received revelation and understanding as to what Jesus meant by what he did mm -hmm. with his disciples. Yes. And so you're saying, I believe, what God is leading you to do in these days. So tell us a little more about what, 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 what he's saying. Well, another reason I believe the Lord has led us in this direction is just to somewhat also break the monopoly and try to get ourselves a little bit closer to the bonding uh, that took place between the Messiah and his disciples. Mm -hmm. Remember, they, they spent so much time together. They ate together, they played together. He was discipling them, teaching them. So we, we meet on average once or twice a week, which is not a lot. The world have us eight hours a day, 10 hours a day in some situations. Well, by us coming together, brings us closer to more of a biblical pattern to sit down, break bread, and not just do that, but to grab the understanding that we're gonna bond. We believe we're gonna bond even closer as a family by eating and loosening up, having a time of worship, having a time of the discussion of the word, uh, feasting around our king, our Lord. And um, I do believe we've done something like this temporarily, and the people were amazed the way they just loosened up and started talking and sharing the things that are on their heart. So we're gonna do this the first Sunday for the next 10 first Sundays of this year. Uh, I think our first meal is gonna be baked fish along with whatever else they put together. It's usually gonna be relatively light, but the scripture says a lot about not taking this time for granted. Mm -hmm. It says that's why there's so many among us sick, right. sleep. It's like if I do apostle wrong, I'm doing me wrong. If I do apostle wrong, I don't have any clue in understanding what the body is about. I'm doing my own body wrong. And people in the church or the body of Christ don't understand. They just whoop, take it, eat it, and that's it. And they don't understand that, hey, we know that's one of the most gossipy places, sometimes the ministries. You're talking about the church? Yeah, the church. Oh, okay. The church. All right. Yeah, you're right. So to bring a greater understanding, Apostle, um, to bring a, now we drink wine at LOCC. Y'all drink real wine. We drink real kosher wine. Oh, Jesus. Now so we have somebody that wants some grape juice. We will provide the grape juice. Give we me the grape juice. Yeah, we, you want the grape juice? Yeah, grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> Along with a little Ezekiel bread. I guess we got what? some in the audience saying they want wine or grape juice. So. <laughs> <laughs> It seems to chill everybody out. <laughs> everybody shows up for communion over there. Uh, all the people in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, you know, Pastor Shelton says the same thing. And I, I don't dispute that because, yeah. you know, um, Jesus drank real wine. Yes. Now, don't come here talking about that wasn't real wine because they, they wasn't. They, they were not uh, 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 making no, no grape juice. They didn't have no, no. welches. No. They, they drank real wine, and you could get drunk. Yes. Hello, somebody. Matter of fact, when, when in, in, in the book of John, it talks about the wedding feast. Yes. And they said, man, you know, y'all put out the best wine <laughs> last. Because, you know, 
um, because they understood the principle and they get the understanding when people get drunk, yes. you just take that old cheap stuff and drink it, let them drink it after they drunk. Yeah. So we understood that that was wine, real wine that they were drinking and they did do that. So we're not going to even just question that. And Paul talks about a little wine for the stomach's sake. So it's not like it's a sin if you drank it. We ain't going to even get that ignorance. We're not going to get ignorant on that. Amen. But we do know in our country that a lot of people are bound by alcohol and the devastation yes. of alcohol, which the Bible says don't get drunk, but they get drunk. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yes, so there are did. people who God called out of alcoholism, yeah. and so they have a little, little problem with drinking the real stuff. Amen. But like what I think you're saying, yes. we have some grape juice for those who feel like maybe this is. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful because it is a feast, a festival, and it's all centered around the love of God. Amen. And, Amen. and so, uh, and what God is seemingly doing, uh, saying to you is, let me give you an added I don't want to use the term added version, but when you're an apostle, God begins to reveal things to you that you didn't understand before. Yes. And he starts to uncover and unfold. And, uh, and you know, I always wanted to do a feast like that. Amen. But uh, my carpet was so pretty, I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have a banquet hall. Yes. So I didn't do it. I never did it. But... Um, uh, that's a wonderful thing when you can sit around yes. and fellowship. Yes. yes. And, 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 and like you're saying, and, and we can discuss yes. the problems we've had mm -hmm. and yes. the difficulties. Because as you know, the church is a very complicated, complicated place. And there's so much division. Yes. So much strife. Yes. So much hatred. In the house. Yes, so much. People come to church, been sitting there for 20 years, but they won't marry nobody in the church. They don't go out with nobody. Their best oh. friends are people in the world. Yes. It's unbelievable to see how we have allowed yes. the enemy to make us enemies. Yes. And, and as you're saying, Paul said, this communion is about your relationship with one another. Yes, so very much. That's so powerful, that's scary. Yes. You take this, having something in your heart, without examining yourself, mm. you're opening up a serious door. Here, here in the book of Matthew, uh, it, it says, um, in, in chapter uh, 26, 19, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready to pass over. Yes. Now when it was evening, and that's why I said you, you know, it's evening, it's a yeah. supper. It's not a brunch. Yeah, we And it's not a breakfast. We're going to brunch it. <laughs> so, but, you know, you do what you do. Yeah. But I just want you to know just it is an evening. Just for now. We're probably going to the evening later. It is evening. That's why, <laughs> that's why I do it on Wednesdays. Oh, okay. See? Okay. I do it Wednesday night instead of Sunday. Yeah. And so Wednesday night is evening, so therefore the people are here. Because it is, it, it was an evening festival. He says, uh, uh, and he sat with the 12, and as they did eat. Yes. So they sat and they did eat. Yes. He said, verily I send to you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorry for him, and, and, and everyone, and began every one of them to say to him, Lord, is it I? You know the mm -hmm. problem I have with that? They all were saying something about it. Yes. They all misunderstood him. Yes. And they were messed up. This was the last day Jesus was going to be with them. Yeah. He spent some three plus years with them. Mm -hmm. They saw him under every condition. And they still had a problem. Yes. They were still talking about it. Amazing. They, they, they all asked the question, is it I? And then you know Judas answered. Uh, and, and say, was it him? And Jesus told Judas it was him. Yes. You know, Jesus says, and he answered and said, he that dippeth his hands with me in the dish, the same shall, be, uh, shall betray me. Yes. The son of man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto the man, uh, unto the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Yes. It has been good for that man if he had not been born. My God. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? Mm. 
My God. And he said, thou hast said. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And as they were eating, he took bread. Mm. See, so they were doing the Passover. Yes. What they normally do, there were songs. They sang, they made, they sang the Psalms. Yes. They drank the wine. And they had different parts and components. And so as they were eating, he took the bread. Yes. The bread. This time he did something different with the bread that he had never done before. Hmm. And he took that bread, and the Bible says here, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, I want you to take and eat. And he adds something to it. He says, this is my body. Yes. Now, I know that it's his body. Yes. But you and I are his body. Yes. That's, oh, that's the depth of it. And that's what we need to understand, yes. that it is his body. Yes. That bread that's is it. his body. Yes. And we have to watch very much how we treat each other. His body. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so much damage. So much damage I, I find that is just done in the church by the lack of understanding mm -hmm. that is his body, Apostle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible says that they're going to know us by our love one to another. The, the world will know us by our love That's one correct. to another. That's right. Our concern one to another. Not by anything else. It doesn't give us any other inklings, even though we know there are other manifestations of Christ in our life. But yet, that's the one he tells us about. There's another scripture that says, with no dissimulation, meaning no hypocrisy that we're to love one another. Mm. Keep it real. Wow. You know? Um, and this, this pattern of referring to the body of Christ, he says there is many among us that are sick, mm -hmm. that are asleep, mm -hmm. because they have not discerned the Lord's the body. The body, his body. His body. So therefore, when I got the revelation of that, I, I understood that you are me and I am you, and we are his. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I do you wrong, if I slander your name, I am really slandering the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if I breed sickness among myself, I mean, he says sick, mm -hmm. asleep, weak, weak, and sleep. And where we find most of the people that are sick, sleep, and weak, in our sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. Right in the church. Right in the church. Not understanding, hey, what is it going to cost you to owe me nothing but to love me? And you know, in the tradition of church, the the, the, the time that services is full is this time. Yeah. And they don't understand that they're coming to add more sickness and weakness and death to themselves. My God. Because they're not discerning yes. the, Lord's body. the Lord's body. And so the church is packed out. They got their white clothes on or whatever color they have <laughs> on. <coughs> I don't know where they get that from. But they have their white clothes on. Yeah. And they're going to partake of the communion without dealing with their heart. Mm, yes, yes. We must deal with our heart. Very much. And this whole communion is about dealing with our heart. And, and we're missing it because we want to blame others yes. for how we're feeling. Oh, my God. That's it. You have or I have some ill feeling inside of me. And I am saying... The reason why I am feeling this way is because you did something to me. Oh, my God. Well, how could you, who's standing on the outside of me, be affecting me on the inside? My God. Oh, somebody better help me yes. here. And yes. so what God is saying, wait a minute. What you are feeling is an indicator that something is wrong with you. Yes. And all yes. this person is doing is reflecting the problem you're facing. My God. And so now what you need to do is go to them, yes. get it right, yes. and then that feeling you feel will disappear. Amen. When I forgive you, I get free. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's supposed to be the results right there. When I forgive you, I get healed. Amen. Yes. When I forgive you, I get happy. Yes. yes. When I forgive you, I get some more life, some more, some more years of yeah. my life. 
Hello, somebody. So communion is designed for me to free myself from all of the enemies yes. Yes. inside of me. They're not Harry, Joe, and James. Yes. It's Leonard. Yes, that's it. It's Leonard. That's it. It's me allowing myself to be offended. Yes. And not doing what the Bible says. If somebody comes against you, go to them and get it right. But I choose to let the sun go down on my wrath, and my wrath becomes something like unforgiveness. Well, so what most believers do, Apostle, they run. They run. They run mm -hmm. instead of dealing with their character. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have, we don't have character. We don't have character. Oh, no. That's what it is. But where, where do you get character from? <laughs> Did your mama teach you character? Uh, should have. She didn't, though. Because she didn't have none. You're right. Yes. You, we, That's you, what we, you, see. You, we came from heathens. Yes. So we didn't have no character. Yes. Oh, I can't get